Good evening, everyone. I'm Ashley Banfield. Welcome to Crime and Justice. You knew David Copperfield had to cough up some of his secrets to explain his illusion was safe, but now more people are coming forward saying they got injured in his act, too, and they could very well change the mega million dollar business of magic. Justin Fryman is tracking the new claims. That's right. The plaintiff's attorney saying he's got two more people that have come forward saying they were also injured during this illusion. But will they have to take the stand? I tell you who will take the stand and is on it right now. David Copperfield himself giving away some of the secrets to his big illusions. But I don't have to give away my secrets. <laughs> I think there's more to his secret that might come out on the stand. I'm going to check in with you in a bit. Thank you, Justin. Also ahead tonight, the man with the mustache. Uh, who had to be tased 10 times before he eventually was taken off a plane to Chicago. Mouthing off the whole way. Michael Christian has been following this one, and the video is, I think you could fairly say it's insane. Yes, absolutely right, Ashley. This guy is every uh, airline passenger's worst nightmare. He allegedly fondled another passenger, taunted police, made racist comments, and even when they get him off the plane, it's not over, and we have it all on videotape. I still can't believe you can see the tase going off and it's having no effect on yep. him. All right, Michael, check in in a moment. Also, a young lady is put on curfew. Doesn't sound so bad until you learn that it is a former high school cheerleader who's accused of killing and burying her own newborn baby. How is regular house arrest not good enough for someone who's about to go on trial for murder? We're going to find out about how that happened as well. First, though, to our top story, the allegations against David Copperfield's magic acts. They are only heating up, and that heat could end up putting a chill on audiences everywhere, especially the kind of show that asks you if you want to be part of it, if you want to come up on stage. Because Copperfield is one of the kings of a mega million dollar industry. And what's happening to him in Vegas probably won't stay in Vegas. A man who claims he was injured during Copperfield's disappearing act now seems to have some friends. Two other people who say they were also hurt during his show. Though Copperfield's team insists that man that you saw in the bed is just one man among 96,000 or so people who have all been able to help make the magic happen and somehow walk away from the illusion unscathed. In any location at all that the illusion had been performed, any location, to your knowledge, because that's all I can ask you, um, has anyone ever fallen <coughs> during the runaround? Not to my knowledge, okay. except for Mr. Cox. Okay. Huh, but that man, Mr. Cox, has an attorney. And that attorney has seemingly been rounding up some other people, other people who are willing to talk out loud, maybe even in a courtroom. And he's made a little announcement that those people may just testify. And that got David Copperfield's de defense team uh, with their backup, asking for a mistrial. All the while, the magician still had to get back up on the stand and keep on answering those safety questions about the stage. Is it important to you to make sure they're safe? Yes. Now, that was an easy question, a yes or no, but they aren't all that easy. With me now is Rachel Stockman. She's the editor-in-chief at Law and Crime Network. Alexander Boyce is a featured performer with Monday Night Magic. That's the longest-running off-Broadway magic show in New York. And defense attorney Brian Claypool is also joining us from Los Angeles. Rachel, I'm going to begin with you. I said the yes and no answers are the easy ones. Sometimes they are and sometimes they aren't. But they're really kind of getting to the nitty-gritty that there may be other people. That, that core argument that, oh, it's just one guy, for God's sake. Maybe there are more. Will they see the light of day? Well, that's what the plaintiff's attorneys are trying to nail David Copperfield on, because David Copperfield has said over and over on the stand, he didn't know about anyone else. Thousands of people have gone through this magic show and no one was ever hurt. Well, as you mentioned, two more women have come forward saying they were injured during this magic show and the plaintiff's attorneys want to put them on the stand and plan to put them on the stand. They can. They can do that. Just sort of like the Perry Mason thing midway through the trial. Aha! We found two more people. Well, they're, they're certainly going to fight tooth and nail to do that. So it's not a, it's not a given yet. It's not a given yet, but they're, and Copperfield's attorneys are going to try to keep them off the stand, of course. But we'll see what happens here. Meantime, Alexander's in the middle of us like a ping pong match. <laughs> oh my God, what's going to happen? And I'm wondering if you're watching this case as a magician. You make your money, you make your living by keeping secrets and making sure that you can still get people to come up on stage. And things like this might put a chill on that. Are you worried about this case? No, I'm not. I don't have any concern You're about not? it. I think that uh, magic has a rich history 
and that this is the first incident I've ever heard of anything like this. And I don't think that people will be affected by this. Uh, ah, but that's the key. You said it's the first. What if this guy prevails against David Copperfield? And all of a sudden, David Copperfield and every other production company and magicians around the country are starting to realize, you mean we could be sued for millions? Well, I mean, I think that's a concern in developing any show. Uh, and Copperfield's show is, you know, the pinnacle of all Las Vegas magic shows. How many people do you bring up on stage in your act? Well, it depends on the evening, but you know, yeah. I'm often bringing up four or five people, but every magician, every performer takes this into consideration, especially now with immersive theater in New York City. Yeah. It's beyond magic. You know, this case does mean something beyond magic even, but I think it's, uh, you know, people will still have the desire to be a part of an amazing experience. I ask you that because there's an issue that's going on in this courtroom, and uh, I think a lot of people didn't realize this at first, that David himself is being sued, not just the production company, not just the MGM, you know, the big deep-pocketed uh, entities. David himself is being sued, and apparently he didn't really even know it. At least that's what he said on the stand. Have a listen to that question and how he answered it. Okay. Do you know that you are being sued personally in this case and that you are a defendant? Do you know that? I don't know that. No. So I, f I find that hard, hard to believe because he's got high-priced attorneys. MGM has high-priced attorneys. They had to have gone over some of the kinds of questions he'd be facing on the stand, especially what the lawsuit... If you read the lawsuit, which you can, it's public record. You it see, names him right on the lawsuit. So it is quite shocking that this man well, didn't know that. Do you think maybe, Rachel, that they didn't think this was very serious, that they'd be dispensing with it pretty quickly? Absolutely. These cases settle so often. I can only imagine they were hoping before huh. this actually went to trial that they would be able to settle this among the parties, but they weren't. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Uh, either David Copperfield has a mind unlike mine in terms of being able to remember every step of every named um, safety mechanism that they put in place, or they coached him because he was asked about the seven different safety assessments that happened during the show, and he was able to answer perfectly. Or do you think it's perfect? Have a listen to how he managed that question. First, um, the backstage staff watches them walk from their seats up to them on the sidewalk. That's number one. Number two, as they're speaking to them, telling them about the po possibility of running the third one is up the stairs to the stage, which intentionally has no banister. You have people there, in case something goes wrong, but there's not a banister there to see how they navigate stairs without a handrail. Um, we line up the people and have them change places, reorder them on okay. stage in the flight. And what's the difference? The, what do you call it? The walk, walk around. around. Walk around. Uh, the next is they walk up another set of stairs to the platform. Seven is as they take their seat. How you it's, uh, to get between the chairs and so forth to go around the corner and see how they you know how they. I've never seen them sit up and down ever before. All that is fascinating, except for the fact that I keep waiting for them to get to the nitty gritty part of the stuff we don't know. Last week, as he was on the stand, it became uh, painfully evident, and I'm sorry if you believe in Easter bunnies and Santa Clauses and all the rest, that the people don't actually disappear. They actually end up going through a tunnel, okay? I don't think that that's the secret we all expected was going to be the solution to the magic trick, and it wasn't. There's still another core piece of this trick that he's kept secret, that they haven't clawed away at. And Brian Claypool, I wonder if you can weigh in on this. As we're looking at the video, all these people get up on that platform up there. They have to sit down and the platform is raised. Then the curtain goes around it and then they somehow all disappear. But you don't see their little feet pitter pattering off the platform. Somehow they get from that raised platform into the bowels of that theater. And that, I think for many people, would be the secret. Do you think it's germane to this case that they make David Copperfield blow the doors off of every single aspect of this magic trick, especially if it wrecks other magic tricks too? Yeah, that's a great question, Ashley. I, I, I personally think that it's not the trick that's the center of this lawsuit. It is simply the condition of the floor and what caused this actual fall. So I don't think they needed to go into this grave detail about what 
led up to the actual fall. This, this glamour and glitz about the actual trick itself, the magic. It's not the magic, it's who controlled that floor where this gentleman fell? Was it a dangerous condition? And who maintained that case. floor? <laughs> That's what yeah, I said. It's a personal injury case. It's, it's a not pre the premises it's liability your, your business. Yeah. is what it's called. Hold that. Um, because when I talk about that aspect of give me all your secrets and that could ruin your show, it could ruin your magic, it could ruin, actually it could ruin things for me because I still can't figure out for the life of me how you do what you do. So I can't have a magician again without showing me some of the creativity, something you created yourself, something that you forged your heart, your soul. It's your secret sauce. You built it. You made it. You own it. And you do not want anyone else to have it. Do you have a trick like that? I have something. I, you know, I'd like to steal some money from you, but not your money because I'm a nice guy. No, 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 I do have money. Oh, sure, because sure. Because I have been asked before and I didn't do it last week and I was expecting that I was going to have money taken. Okay. It but was I'll, just... I'll give you my money so that way... I can steal it back from you. You don't feel bad about it, okay? Okay. Okay. So here, it's not a lot, but it's enough to make this fun. Twenty. But this bucks. isn't funky money, like all the viewers. No, no. I want you to check it okay, out, right? right? So hold it so George faces That's, you. It's kind of wrecked and stuff. Too. Wait, which camera can I put it to? Just tell me which camera are you on the close up? Hold on, right there. Very good. It's a regular one. I'm going to tell you right now. And follow my instructions. Fold it once and a half. With like the, you know, this. with that used smell. <laughs> okay. It's yes. like everything else. Okay. So fold it in half once. In half. Okay. And then once more. Okay, which camera am I playing to? Three? Okay, and then once more? Yeah. That way? Okay. That's to make a little smaller package, a little okay. easier to steal. Now, if okay. that was in your pocket or your wallet and I went digging around in there, that could be a little intrusive. So I'm going to take it right from your hand. Keep your right hand right like that. There's the one and the 20. On top. Fold your fingers over. Okay, they're absolutely both they're in there. They're definitely in your hand, They're yes. both in there. I swear to you, they're both in now, there. No, I'm going to steal that money out, okay? But before I get started, just to demonstrate, open up a little bit and let me get one, okay? Just one. Okay. This, is, this isn't very good. Now squeeze tight. <laughs> you took the one. Exactly. Well, see, that's how I get the first bill. But okay. I'm a lot more interested in what you have than what I have. Okay. Now afterwards... Because I have the 20 still in there. Sure. Okay. And you'll get a lot of calls if you could still feel the 20 in your hand. I can do. You still I can feel, feel it. it. Can I wrinkle it in my microphone? Sure. But you have to pay attention to what you feel and what you see. Can because you in a that? moment... Can you hear my microphone? Can you hear it? I'm... Okay, good. All it's right. going to happen here and there at the same time. <clears throat> and this is that moment. Oh, wow, that's nutty. Now, if this is here, that is not gonna be I can one. only imagine what's in your hand. Come I haven't on. even touched your hand. But Come when on. you feel you brave enough, go ahead, open it up and show them what you've got. <gasps> oh, my God. It's so, And look, at it's all crinkled from me crinkling. You had a death microphone. grip on that, didn't I you? I did. <laughs> did you come up with that? Well, see, that's actually a piece of magic I'm really lucky to have learned from some magicians in Las Vegas, a gentleman named Paul V. Hill and another mentor of mine, Johnny Thompson. I like that you credit those guys for learning that trick because I think a lot of you guys actually do learn these tricks mm -hmm. I know that they can be purchased as well there are industries that create um, you know these are intellectual property yes and so for you to credit them it means that their magic is important to you as David Copperfields would be important to others not just him so this case isn't just about him that's right yeah it's a, it's a big thing and you know David Copperfield has an amazing team working behind him just like late night stand-up comedians have teams of writers behind them and he's you know just for 40 years been able to put out incredible material and this is just one piece of a vast repertoire of his real quickly Rachel I want to I want to um, continue this segment after the break but I do want to know if he has changed his tune there was a lot of showmanship last week he's swaggered past the jury big old grin he bobbed his head to music etc did that go over well and did something change today I saw I have to say I saw a little bit of a change he was a little bit more subdued just directly answering those <laughs> questions I wonder if he feels like he's facing the music or someone said something yeah you wonder especially listening to some of the commentary uh, maybe us uh, he, he reined it in a little bit but I could see a notable difference on how he was on the stand by today. the way I, I wasn't critical of it I actually I think it plays well I, I think juries, do you yep I think juries watch a show in that courtroom and he is a showman okay stand by you got another awesome trick right wonderful is it is it the, is it the one with the bird we got something special coming <laughs> does up does it involve a bird it might involve a bird <laughs> i knew it okay so uh i have a few more questions i want you to see something else with david copperfield in a moment and then alexander may or may not make a bird disappear or reappear i'm not sure we'll what. find out <laughs> He's not giving it up. <laughs> but last week in court you probably noticed that that demeanor of david copperfield's was really obvious right there he is bobbing his head to that music I told you about. He sort of performed in front of the attorneys. This week, though, a whole new approach. But is this what matters? 
Or is there something far, far, far darker and deeper that matters?